Hey guys, today I'm going to convert from an OBD2 distributor to an OBD1 while using the same housing for the OBD2. A lot of you are just like, why don't you go get an OBD1? Well, this is my customer's car and my friend Jake, and it's his Del Sol. They put an OBD2 motor in it, and we don't have a lot of money, so we got a B series distributor laying around. We're going to take all the internals out of it and throw it inside the OBD2 housing. Everything will still swap between, and I'll show you how to do that. So stay tuned. This one here is the OBD2. See how it has a one wire? This is the housing we're going to use for the D16Y8 engine. This one is a B series. Um, and as you can see, just by looking at it, the mounting is different. This, this, they're set the same direction. This also has two connector plugs versus the one. OBD1, OBD2. First we're going to start taking apart the OBD2. This time you'll inspect the cap, and in this, this cap is brand new. You'll check the points, make sure there's no corrosion, um, the uh, inside points where the plug wires go in, you'll want to check in here. There's no corrosion because this cap is brand new, so we'll reuse this cap. Also check the rotor. This rotor is also brand new. There's no wear on it, so we're going to reuse this rotor coil. This is an entirely remanufactured distributor, so we're going to use all the internals out of this that we can. Be sure not to lose these screws. Okay, now that you got all this up here undone, you're going to want to focus on the back side, and there's this little C-clip here. If you don't have a C-clip remover, you can just use a little small flathead, and then just pop it up all the way around. And then knock the little cylinder out and it pulls apart. Alright, now after you remove the screws, you'll see it pulls up out of here. Just like that. Just pulls straight up. You don't want to remove anything that's else that is attached, such as this. And that's it for the uh, internals, the wiring for the OBD1 system. Now you're going to want to take all this and put it in the OBD2 housing. You can reuse the coil, the rotor, uh, the igniter, but I am not too certain on reusing these because some of them are set up differently for timing. So I would just stick to the OBD1, OBD2's manual mechanisms like these. Okay, now we're going to remove the OBD2 components and in the internals. Um, if you look inside this cap, there's some corrosion on all four of the points. That means it's time to replace this cap. So it's a good thing we have the other cap. So this one's just trash. The B series and the D series share the same exact cap, so no worries there. There's a protective casing. It's optional if you want to put it back on. I usually don't, but in this case I will since it's not my car, it is for a customer.
Be sure to make sure you know what order these wires came off. Green and yellow, that one is the farthest one away from the flat side. The second one is the black and yellow for the coil. It goes to the positive on the coil. And then this white and blue is the very last one on this clip right here for the OBD2 system. Also, when removing this and you pull this pin out, you lose the timing. So it can be either dead on or 180 degrees off. So you're going to want to mark it. See how these lines match up with these smaller lines? You're going to want to mark up here where PO6. It says PO6 right here. You'll mark it right there. So you know that PO6 and that have to line up in order for these lines to line up. It's just a good way to do it. And if you don't, you'll have to take it all back apart off the car because it won't start. So carefully do all that. Now you're gonna wanna take the OBD1 stuff and put it in the same spot that it came out. Make sure the PO6 is lined up with that mark that was made earlier. And then you insert this where the line is with that line up top. And that's it. Well, we'll set it on the car and fire it up to give it a test run.